Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. So in today's video, I've got another satisfying before and after renovation process to share with you all. This time it's going to be the transformation of my very dusty 50 year old floor being replaced with a brand new hardwood one. I'm pretty sure the floor is 50 years old anyway. Um, the previous owner of this place called David still lives quite nearby. So I've been over to ask him a few times about how old different parts of the building are, just so I have information that can make these videos a bit more interesting with the history of the building. Um, just to be clear though, because I'm conscious that sounds weird, when I say I've gone over and asked him a few times about how old parts of the building are, I've done that like twice over the course of 10 months and I only asked about the floor and the roof. I'm not like knocking on his door at three in the morning going, David, how old's the sink? So, no, nothing like that. Now, if you're wondering why the place looks like 10 steps behind what it looked like in the last renovation video I uploaded, it's because these clips are from a while back. In the last video I uploaded, Sean Paul and his guys built up the internal walls with timber, insulation and then plasterboard, getting it prepared for the painting, hardwood floor and kitchen all going in. As I've said before, I quite like keeping these renovation videos slash episodes topic based rather than time based. So I'll film everything that goes on and then sort of chop up and categorize all of the clips I have together in their specific topics, if that makes sense. For example, I put all of the roof light installation clips together to make a roof light focused video. And then I put all of the roof retiling clips together to make a video focused on just the re-roofing process and so on. So that's why this video, which is fully focused on the floor, has some initial clips from way back before the walls went up, because that's when the flooring process actually started. That way of shooting and editing these videos is also the reason why in this video you'll see little bits of the transformation that I'm not going to show the full process of today, such as the walls going from unpainted to painted and the kitchen cabinets going in. Sean Paul actually installed the kitchen and the new hardwood flooring all in one day, which I was very impressed with, but I wanted to make two separate videos about those two processes, so I'll have that second part showing the kitchen being installed uploaded next week, and in that video, you'll see what this part of the house looks like fully finished because that's actually this phase of the renovation now completed. I'm trying to keep myself on track with a little notepad here of things I was needing to speak about and one of the other things I wanted to talk about was why we didn't opt to just save the previous flooring, the 50 year old dusty flooring that Sean Paul and his apprentice Kean were tearing up at the start of the video. In fact, in my very, very first renovation video of this place, I showed myself and my dad ripping up the old carpets and taking out the old kitchen. And as part of that, we obviously exposed the 50 year old floors that are getting pulled up in the start of this video. In that first video with my dad and I, a lot of people commented saying that it would be nice to like sand down those floorboards and refinish them with oil but obviously I haven't gone with that option. The reason for that is that it just wasn't insulated and therefore wasn't much use to me. You could see that between the floor joists at the very start, which are the big wooden beams that Sean Paul was putting the cuts of insulation into before putting chipboard down on top of it, that before there was nothing there. It was just full of dust which isn't really an ideal insulator. I'm pretty sure in one of my first videos which featured Sean Paul, I said that one of our big aims with this renovation was to make a lot of the building more insulated, both for heat retention and soundproofing, because previously we had neither of those things. In the case of heat retention, that's obviously self-explanatory why I would want that. I want the place to be hotter because Scotland gets cold, heating's expensive, so it makes sense to do your best when it comes to 
just getting the walls and floor and ceiling insulated. When it comes to the soundproofing aspect, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but this house isn't actually a house and is more of an upstairs flat. I know that's maybe a bit odd considering it has a garden on the same level as the living room and kitchen and usually an upstairs flat wouldn't have a garden on the same level anyway. The reason that's possible is because our whole village is kind of perched on a hill, which you'll have likely seen in my videos if you've seen the other ones, which means a lot of people in the village have gardens higher up than their actual house. So that's why this upstairs flat has effectively an upstairs garden. But yeah, that's why I want to get this place soundproofed as much as possible because I have downstairs neighbors and I don't want them hearing me tap dance and I don't want to hear them either. Not because I don't like them or because I'm being rude, it's actually more because if I'm making videos and doing voiceovers, it's beneficial for me to have the most quiet spaces I can. So that's my main reasoning. I'm gonna see if I can get the soundproofing elements of this renovation written off as a business expense as well. Explain to the tax man that I can't be having my downstairs neighbors ruining my videos if they end up sneezing or something when I'm doing a voiceover. The other thing I've got in my little notepad is that I need to apologize for it being a while since I uploaded anything. I had quite a few people messaging me on Instagram to make sure I wasn't dead. I am still alive but I was just a bit ill this past couple of weeks which is why I wasn't uploading anything. I don't know if it was a cold, a bug or maybe Covid but I had the worst sore throat I'd had in years. Uh, which means I just couldn't do voiceovers for my videos and that's been the reason for my absence. I'm feeling better now though, so I'll get back to my regular posting. Um, it was actually the first time I'd been ill or noticeably ill in about three or four years. Uh, like I said, I'm not very sure what it was that I caught, but one thing that did happen was I went so deaf. My head was all just like gummed up and I couldn't hear a word anyone was saying. So honestly, for like two weeks, I just couldn't hear anything clearly. And I was just constantly smiling and nodding when people were speaking to me. So there was definitely a good few occasions where people were asking me something, but I couldn't hear it properly. So I would just smile and nod, hoping that it was enough for them. And it quite often wasn't because they were asking me a question I couldn't hear, so. I must have looked mental. Now although this video was all focused on the old flooring getting taken up and the new flooring going in, I wanted to include this little clip of the new bookshelf going in which I got custom made by a company that Sean Paul knows. So I was really happy with this. The shelves on the inside are pretty much identical to the flooring which looks really nice and this little bit at the end was Sean Paul just putting in an oak frame which matches the shelves and matches the floor. So I'm excited to fill this with lots of colorful books to give the place a pop of color. I think it looks really good. Also, the radiators that you saw getting put in in this video are from Stellrad, it's part of their designer range, and I'm really happy with them. You can actually get them in different colors, um, but I wasn't brave enough to go with them. I'm pretty sure they come in all sorts of wild colors, so highly recommend them if you're looking for some stylish, fancy radiators. But very happy with how it's all looking. The bookcase really finishes it off. The oak looks great. And as always, here's a little before and after of what the place looked like. This is the living room when the ceilings were still low, the carpets were still down, the old patio doors were in and the old kitchen was in. Not gonna show you the new kitchen quite yet. That'll be one for next week's video. But as you can see, it was all quite dark, all quite low, and now things are just looking so much nicer than previously, in my opinion. Not to like call out the previous owner or previous decorators, but yeah, I'm just much happier with how the place is looking. Got the matching door into the place, which matches the patio doors. So it's really all coming together, really pleased with how it's all looking. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate you taking a second to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.